Welcome to the Arlington Catholic Herald podcast. I'm Mary Stikaira Lopez, social media coordinator. And I'm Zoe Murray, staff writer. We recently ran a story called God's Gouda, and it's about Trappist nuns who make cheese. In 1987, the Monastery of Our Lady of Angels was founded near Charlottesville in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. On the newly purchased 507-acre farm was a barn filled with ready-to-use cheese-making machinery, so the nuns got to work. Joining us over the phone today is Sister Barbara Smichael. She's here to tell us more about her community and, of course, the cheese. Welcome to the show, Sister. Thank you. Happy to be here. So if I have this right, you all are Trappist Cistercian nuns. That's correct. Uh-huh. Okay. Can you tell us a little about your charism and your way of life? Well, our order was founded in Citeaux in France. That's where the word Cistercian comes from okay. in 1098. So we've been around a long time. Mm. And there was a reform of the order, as is usual with human institutions, <laughs> in the Middle Ages. And then it was at the Abbey of La Trappe in France. And that's where the second name, Trappist or Trappistine, comes from. And we're a world, okay. worldwide order. Uh, about 5,000 monks and nuns all, uh, living in separate monasteries, living celibate lives in separate monasteries, but keeping very close to one another in um, exchange of information and exchange of things that help our spiritual lives. So uh, we are the youngest house of our order in this country, as you said, founded in 1987. We came, our charism is to live the monastic life, which is a life of prayer and work on the monastery property. We go out for shopping and uh, voting and and other kinds of appointments, uh, which necessitate a physical presence, you know, apart from the monastery. We always wear our habits, our religious habits, when we do that so that people get to know us. So we're quite well known in the Charlottesville area, actually. And many people come here to pray in our church, pray with us and pray by themselves, to some some people to stay at our guest cottages for private retreats, and some come, of course, to purchase the cheese. And our order always looks for the possibility of some means of self-support when we look at sending a new little colony of the sisters out to a new place. Sure. So as you said, the former owner of the property Uh, had a small cheese-making business going on the property, and we thought that would be something we could use in the future after we got settled to to support ourselves and enable us to give alms also. So that's what happened, as you said. We've been doing the cheese now for mm, 1990, so almost almost 29 years. Wow. And it's, it's... it's a wonderful work. It, uh, we're making something nutritious and wholesome and no, no artificial ingredients and um, uh, something that you can be proud of and can, can, sell to, can give to people or sell to people with, with a certain amount of a good pride in, right. a, in a good product. But also it's a great community work. We do it together. Everybody has some job in connection with the cheese making. And so it builds community along with helping us support ourselves and, and giving something to those in need. Wonderful. In the article mentioned that you all buy milk from local farms. So how much milk do you guys get for a cheese-making day? And then how much cheese did <laughs> that, that become? absolutely overwhelming. We get it from a Mennonite farm over near Dayton. We say across the mountains, you know, in the Shenandoah Valley. Okay. And we, um, because of the size of the equipment we have, uh, we make about, 800 pounds of cheese at one time. Wow. So that is 400 <laughs> little two-pound cheeses, which is the one size we make now. And to do that takes about 7,000 7, pounds of milk. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you get, I know that, that's usually the, uh, the, the response of the city is wow. Uh, so it comes the day before, delivered by the co-op, picked up at the farm, delivered by the co-op, uh, in a big tank truck, and we keep it cold overnight in our milk bulk tank. The next morning, we transfer it to a pasteurizer, and then we start the process, which begins about 3.30 in the morning. The first two sisters go then. Okay. And then it's going to end up about about 4.30 in the afternoon. So it's about 13 hours from start to finish. And But not everyone has to be there for the whole time. We go in shifts according mm-hmm. to how many sisters are needed at one time. Okay. And then you guys sell it on the property as well? 
We do. We sell it through the mail. Mail order is our large, the largest part of our business, okay. but we also uh, sell it uh, at the door of the monastery, and then there's a couple fine foods shops in Charlottesville where we also sell it. But we don't we don't do wholesale, and we don't have a um, we don't have a, a distributor as you, as it were. Okay. Oh, well, I have to j- say, even though your spirituality involves be- uh, withdrawing a little bit from the world, mm-hmm. you do have a huge fan base outside of the monastery, it seems. <laughs> we do, indeed. <laughs> um, We've become aware of that the last few days. People commenting yeah. on, on the article and the pictures and coming to the door to purchase teas and calling in. And <laughs> it's quite nice, quite, quite nice to connect with the public that way. Well, let me just share with you a few of the comments we're getting on Facebook. Deborah. Uh-huh. Writes, their Gouda cheese is the best. We order from them several times a year. Christy says their cheese is so delicious. Truly the best Gouda I've had made with love. And there are yeah. dozens more. So <laughs> yeah, they're, well, they're made with love, it strikes me, because people ask us, you know, what's the secret ingredient? We say, well, it's love and prayer. You know, we put a lot of that mm-hmm. into our into our cheese. <laughs> and they say, well, you can taste it. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, sister. Thank, well, thank you for having us. God bless you. Thank you. For anyone who wants to read the story by Aaron Edgerton, just go to catholicherald.com and search God's Gouda. You can find the link in the show notes as well. Before we go, just a reminder that the big news this week is clergy announcements and assignments. Um, Christopher Scalia, the brother of Father Paul Scalia, wrote on Twitter that, quote, Catholic priests and parishioners await the annual new clergy assignments like football fans do the NFL draft. That is so true. This is a hotly anticipated <laughs> list we found online and in print. So be sure to get, pick up a copy of this week's edition to find out who's been drafted at your parish. <laughs> um, and also this week, you will not want to miss our 56-page issue, which has a special graduation section highlighting uh, Zoe three sets of triplets. Yes, three sets of triplets graduating from O'Connell, a lot of outstanding seniors this year, uh, a pair from John Paul the Great, who have been going to school together since pre-K, now going to West Point together. Wow. So a lot of good stuff to check out. Yeah, and find your Catholic high school grad's name listed on mm-hmm. there as well. So it's definitely something to keep, and it was a labor of love for all of us at the Herald. So Thanks for joining us today, and be sure to email circulation at catholicherald.com if you need to start a subscription. Thanks to George Goss for producing this podcast. Mm-hmm.